Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to our educational discussion about overcoming life's challenges and promoting mental health. Join us as we analyze the underlying causes of societal stress and trauma with expert insights from Dr. Dan Siegel and Dr. Gabor Mate. All here together to be exploring how can we live our best life? What does this mean for us as individuals, as a society? So I am so pleased to have this discussion, not just about core root causes of our suffering, but also the tremendous hope of living in this moment, of being a human who has such insight and knowledge and our actions matter so much for our future generations. So let me introduce my two colleagues here, Dan Siegel, who's the executive director of the Mindsight Institute. He's a household name in many countries. Dan is going to help us understand how we can wake up from this lie of the separate self. And Gabor Mate, physician, best-selling author. He has brought us so much insight over decades on understanding addiction, trauma, child development. So I'd like to start by welcoming both of you. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having us. You know, one way to um, begin this discussion, I think, is to say that when we feel overwhelmed, when something meaningful is at stake and we feel hopeless for what the future holds or helpless to do something about it, it can make that understandable stress of a meaningful thing happen, happening to turn into distress. And in some ways, the related topic for today is about trauma when events that are happening can overwhelm our ability to cope and lead to lasting negative impacts that both you, Alyssa and, and Gabor, you have beautifully written about. And so what I'd like to just present is the view that one of the messages that modern culture has been giving that is very different from what indigenous wisdom has taught us from thousands of years of various traditions from around the world and also paralleled by contemplative wisdom practices from thousands of years also from around the world is the view that modern culture says the self is the same as the individual, that who we are is just this person in a singular body or bodies like, like ours. If we call that the solo self, this isolated, separated view of what the self is, we go against what indigenous teachings have taught. We go against what contemplative teachings have taught. And yet we embed this in the way we parent our children, the way we school them in educational programs, the way culture at large is telling us that we're separate. What I want to suggest to you is that that mechanism of the solo self seeps into our core into our soul, into our minds, and has us feel without even our awareness that there's something not quite right. And so it leads to social injustice and racism, saying us versus them, and we are better than those people over there. It leads to misinformation and polarization. It leads even to the climate crisis, where we separate as humans from nature as if we could possibly be not a part of all living beings. So this solo self may be a lethal lie, lethal in the sense that racism and genocide and what we're seeing now, even in the, with this day of hate, are driven by this in-group, out-group history we've in, inherited. But yet we can rise above that if we realize that we can transcend this view of the separate self with awe, with gratitude, with compassion, which are usually called self-transcendent, but rather see them as self-expanding. So we're not just a me, but we're also a we, this notion of a we, and the idea that we are intra-connected within the wholeness of things. So I think the pathway forward, which we can talk about collectively, 
is a pathway to identify the problem like a splinter in your foot, remove the splinter. So the limping that humanity is doing and is about to destroy the earth with, the living systems on earth, we can actually identify it, remove it and do something about it. The solo self is that splinter that we can actually heal in a very practical way and realize the me and the we that is our true interconnected identity. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Dan. We'll, we'll want the technology for removing the splinter mm -hmm. soon. So Gabor, in thinking about this mental health epidemic, particularly of our youth and how people are interpreting the world, I would love to hear how you think of trauma, the role trauma plays in our mental health crisis. Um, thank you, Alyssa. I'll address that in a moment. Um, let me just first register my uh, pleasure in being on line with the two of you. Let me address one more issue here. Just This just happened today. Pope Francis, three days ago, I should say two weeks ago, put out a tweet. And he said, social justice demands that we fight against the causes of poverty, inequality, and the lack of labor, land, and lodging, against those who deny social and labor rights, and against the culture that leads to taking away the dignity of others. This is Pope Francis, a very famous Canadian psychologist who I'll not dignify by mentioning by name here, but you would know of him, many of you. He tweeted back, there's nothing Christian about redemptive, about social justice. Redemptive salvation is a matter of the individual soul. Wow. Now here's a psychologist who understands nothing about human beings whatsoever. Because to answer your question, Alyssa, about the mental health epidemic that is striking the Western world, the New York Times, Two days ago, I had an article about the rise in childhood in youth depression and anxiety. There have been articles in the New Yorker, the New York Times in the last six months, hand wringing over what's driving the epidemic of childhood suicides. The rate of number, the number of children being diagnosed and uh, treated with medicated for X number of so called mental health disorders is burgeoning. There was an article in the New York Times on the front page only three or four months ago that <clears throat> talked about the same issue and they featured a teenager, 17 year old, I think, who's on eight different psychiatric medications. Mm -hmm. Eight psychiatric medications. So there's something going on that the culture both causes on the one hand and doesn't want to recognize on the other which is that individual mental health, and this is very much along the lines of what Dan was speaking about, uh, individual mental health is not separable from the environment. And it's not separable from the relationships or the lack of relationships that people experience in their lives. So that because our neurobiology is communal and interpersonal, it also means that even if you point to some biological process in a human's brain that you think is causing the mental health condition, what you're missing is that biology itself reflects that person's relationship with the world and with the culture. And driving the mental health epidemic amongst youth in, uh, in our society today is precisely the nature of connections which are very often stressed, troubled, and trauma inflicted, and which are also very often isolating and isolated. So that whatever happens to an individual reflects what's happening to their whole environment and to their culture. And the New York Times and its writers and anybody else will never discover the source of the mental health crisis that many people are facing, particularly young people are facing, without looking at the larger questions of what is it about a culture 
that stresses parents so much that they can't be available for the children the way they would want to be? What is it that uh, dictates that so many people should carry trauma without even knowing it because the healthcare givers learn nothing about trauma during their training? What is it that isolates people so much? How come in the face of the um, social media, what we actually have is not a social media. It doesn't make us more social. It makes us more isolated and alone. And it's been shown that the more people spend time on social media, the less healthy their mental status happens to be. In this culture of competition and isolation and individualism, which is not the by, same, by the way, as individuality, because true individuality has to do with connection with others. Individualism isolates you from others. Unless we're looking at these larger issues, unless we're looking at the root causes, we'll never understand the fruit that we're reaping these days. And that fruit is increasing mental health crisis amongst our youth. So thank you. Those are my preliminary remarks. Thank you. Gabor. Thank you for joining me today for Your Inner Child Matters. I hope this video has given you some great thoughts and motivation. If you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more inspiring contents. Remember, your inner child is important and maintaining that connection can lead to greater happiness in life. Stay in touch with us as we continue to look for ways to improve your well-being and personal development.